night everyone myself dr t dandey rao working as assistant professor in the department of chemistry today i am going to teach about dilans formula dilans formula on scv and lcv today's topic is dilans formula on scv and lcv in this session i am going to cover these topics higher calorific value and its units calorific value and its units higher calorific value or gross calorific value higher calorific value nothing but scv or gross calorific value nothing but gcv lower calorific value or net calorific value lower calorific value nothing but lcv net calorific value nothing but ncv and dilans formula on lcv and ncv and the problem related uh, related on scv and ncv are going to solve in this session i am going to cover these topics before going to this we should know about calorific value see the primary property of a fuel is its capacity to supply heat the primary property of the fuel is that the heat supply okay the primary property of the fuel is the capacity of heat supply fuels essentially consist of carbon hydrogen oxygen and some other elements fuels mainly consist of carbon hydrogen oxygen sulfur these are the uh, elements present in the fuel on combustion these elements produce the heat okay further the heat produced is different for different fuels different types of fuels produce different amount of heat okay these uh, exhibited uh, heat okay now these fuels exhibit some amount of heat this heat is determined in terms of calorific value see the calorific value of fuel may be defined as the calorific value of fuel may be defined as the total quantity of heat liberated the total amount of heat liberated when unit mass when unit mass of a fuel is burnt completely what is the calorific value the total amount of heat liberated the total amount of the total amount of heat liberated by the when a unit mass of a fuel is burnt completely okay mass of the fuel okay this gives the calorific value of the fuel the calorific value is the amount of heat liberated by the complete combustion of unit weight of the fuel is and is usually expressed in calorie per gram or kilocalorie per gram or bthu okay bt is thermal unit what is the calorific value calorific, calorific value is the amount of heat liberated the amount of heat liberated by the complete combustion of a unit weight of the so unit weight of the fuel is called calorific value it can be expressed in terms of calorie per gram or kilocalorie per gram inverse or bt is thermal Unit. These are the units for the calorific value. The calorific value of a fuel can be defined as one more definition for the calorific value. See, the calorific value of the fuel can be defined as the total quantity of heat liberated when a unit mass of the fuel is completely burnt in a air or oxygen. Okay, what is the calorific value? The other definition of the calorific value is the the total quantity of heat liberated. The total quantity of heat liberated when a unit mass of the fuel is completely burnt in presence of oxygen or air is called calorific value see there are different units for measuring the quantity of heat okay for measuring the heat there are different units the, the units for heat are calorie kilocalorie bt is thermal unit that is bthu and centigrade heat unit chu these are the units for the heat to measure the heat we, these are the units we can use to measure the heat those are calorie kilocalorie bt is thermal unit that is bthu and centigrade heat unit chu okay the units for calorific value to measure the calorific value we use the these the these are the units we can use for the to measure the calorific value see for solid or liquid fuels okay for solid or liquid fuels the calorific value can be uh, expressed in terms of calorie per gram or kilocalorie per kg calorie per gram or kilocalorie per kg for solid or liquid fuels we can measure the uh, we can measure the uh, calorific value in terms of calorie per gram or kilocalorie per kg for solid or liquid fuels these are the units for the calorific value for solid or liquid fuels for gaseous fuels in case of gaseous fuels kilocalorie per cubic meter A kilo calorie per cubic meter or kilo calorie per meter cube. These are the units for the calorific value for gaseous fuels. Okay, and other units for British thermal unit BTU 
or BTHU and centigrade heat unit CHU. These are the units for the calorific values. See, 1 kilocalorie nothing but 1000 calories. 1 kilocalorie nothing but 1000 calories. These are the conversion. Okay, these are the conversion of the calorific values. So, one, one unit to other unit. See, 1 kilocalorie nothing but 3.968 BTHU. It is thermal units. 1 kilocalorie equal to 3.968 into it is thermal unit. 1 kilocalorie equal to 3.968 it is thermal unit that is equal to 2.2 centigrade heat unit. CHU nothing but centigrade heat unit. 1 VHU equal to 252 calories that is equal to 0 0.252 kilocalories. These are the conversions of uh, calorific value units from one unit to other Unit. The fuels contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen as the main constituents. Already we discussed fuel, it contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen as a main constituents. Okay. Before going to this uh, NCV and LCV, we should know about latent heat of vaporization and latent heat of condensation. Then only we can uh, know about the what is SCV, higher calorific value, what is NCV, net calorific value. Okay. We can discuss later. First, before going to that, we have to know about latent heat of vaporization this terms you have to know what is latent heat of vaporization it is determined it is defined as heat required to vaporize one mole of liquid under standard atmospheric pressure what is latent heat of vaporization it is defined as heat required the amount of heat required for one mole of liquid under standard atmospheric pressure to convert vapor okay see take one mole of liquid one mole of liquid okay we have to supply some amount of heat to this liquid, one mole liquid. The amount of heat required, the amount of heat required to evaporate, to vaporize, to vaporize this one mole liquid is called, the amount of heat is called the latent heat of vaporization. What is latent heat of vaporization? It is defined as the heat required to vaporize the one mole of liquid under standard atmospheric pressure. We have to maintain some standard conditions atmosphere pressure and temperature uh, atmospheric pressure we have to kept constant in this case first we have to take one mole of liquid okay for that we have to supply some amount of heat that amount of heat required to vaporize this one mole of liquid under standard atmospheric pressure is called latent heat of vaporization that heat is called latent heat of vaporization it is defined as a heat required to heat required to vaporize one mole of liquid under standard atmospheric pressure is called latent heat of vaporization see latent heat of vaporization means we have to supply heat means the water it is taking heat okay so it is endothermic process the latent heat of vaporization is a endothermic process means we have to supply heat to vaporize the liquid to vaporize the liquid we have to supply some amount of heat that heat is called latent heat of vaporization see latent heat of condensation the next term is latent heat of condensation see it is energy released when water vapor condenses to form liquid droplet. What is latent of heat of vaporization? Water, after latent heat of vaporization, the water converted into the vapor. Okay. The vapor converted into the liquid. The vapor droplets converted into the liquid form. Okay. In this case, the heat is released. The amount of heat is released. It is a exothermic process. It is a exothermic process process. See, it is energy released. Energy nothing but heat. The heat is released when water vapor condenses. The water vapor condenses to form liquid droplets. That is called latent heat of condensation. The amount of heat released when the vapor condenses to form liquid is called latent heat of vapor, latent heat of condensation. The latent heat of condensation is the exothermic process. The latent heat of vaporization is Exothermic process, the latent heat of condensation means it is a exothermic process. In case of latent heat of vaporization, we have to supply heat. The water takes heat, it converts liquid to vapor. But in case of latent heat of condensation, the energy or heat is released when the vapor is converted to the liquid. So, the amount of heat released when the uh, condensation of water vapor into the liquid, that heat is called the latent heat of condensation. The latent heat of condensation is an exothermic process. The amount of heat is released in the case of latent heat of condensation. Okay. See, 
the evaporation requires energy the latent heat of evaporation means the evaporation requires energy it is endothermic process the condensation releases energy the condensation process releases energy this is exothermic process okay to understand this latent heat of evaporation latent heat of condensation after then we have to know about uh, gross calorific value or net calorific values okay see let take two containers let take two containers container 1 and this is container 2 okay this is open one this is open container means it it uh, has not contain any uh, lid okay it is open one it is closed one we have to close with lid okay na? same volume container in this the, in this two containers let take 100 grams of rice and 200 ml of water okay in the container 1 you have to take 100 grams of rice and 200 ml of water in container 2 also you take 100 gram rice and 200 ml of water in this two container what one is open one other one is closed one okay in that you take same amount of rice same same amount of volume of water in the second container also you have to take same amount same amount of rice and same volume of water one is closed one and other one is open one then you supply same amount of heat same amount of heat for container 1 and container 2 okay if you observe this which uh, in this container which container uh, rice boiled very fastly in which container the rice will boiled very fastly okay the answer is the closed vessel the rice in closed vessel will boiled very fast because it is a closed container what happens in closed container closed container see this is a open container in that open container rice is there water is there if you supply heat okay if you supply heat the supply heat what happen the some amount of heat is required for water okay the water takes some amount of heat and it converts to liquid to vapor okay the water vapors then get in open vessel the vapors are goes into the okay na atmospheric a because it is open one okay in the atmospheric pressure in the atmospheric air okay these vapors undergo condensation and these vapors are converted into the water okay see here some amount of heat taken okay the water converted into the vapors the vapor condensation takes place at atmospheric a so here amount of heat is released atmosphere the vapor converted into the water means that is the latent heat of condensation it is a exothermic process so here heat is released in the atmospheric air okay there is no heat added in this container but if you take the closed container what happens same the amount of heat is required by the water the water converted into the vapor okay but here it is closed one here it is closed container so the latent heat of condensation means the vapors converted into the water in that process some amount of heat is released some amount of heat is released this vapors will not uh, go, they will not and uh, will not goes into the atmospheric air because it is a closed one so the latent heat of condensation takes place in the in the container okay in this container latent heat of condensation takes place means the water vapor converted into the water so the heat is released in this heat is released within the container so some amount of heat is added to this uh, container here the some amount of heat is Uh, last because the latent heat of condensation takes place in atmospheric air but in this the latent heat of condensation takes place within the container so in this the more amount of heat is supplied okay in this uh, it is the container will be supplied by more amount of heat so here in this case the rice will be boiled very fast container with uh, compare with the, the opened vessel okay the, in the closed vessel the rice will be boiled very fast compare with the open vessel types of calorific value okay there are different types of calorific values are there see when calorific value measured in openly the produced vapor escape into atmosphere and lost some heat energy that is called lcv what happens same in the in previous case we have discussed about the rice but in this case you have to take some amount of some amount of fuel taken in open container and same amount of fuel taken in closed container then what happened when calorific value measured in openly the calorific value of fuel measured in openly okay it produces some vapor the fuel contain 
some moisture or carb hydrogen is there in fuel hydrogen is there oxygen is there hydrogen oxygen combined it forms moisture okay the moisture is present in the fuels okay this fuel if you take in open container and closed container so if you produce heat what happens when you calorific volume measured in openly the produced vapor escape into the atmosphere in open case what happened the produced water vapor escape into the atmosphere and lose some amount of heat energy it lose some amount of heat energy that is called that calorific value is called lowest calorific value lower calorific value when calorific value measured in closed vessel if you measure the calorific value of fuel in closed vessel okay the produced vapor condensed and released vapor energy that is scv means higher calorific value if you measure the calorific value in open container okay na if you measure the calorific value in open okay that is called lcv lower calorific value if you measure the calorific value of a fuel in closed container that is called higher calorific value scv okay higher calorific value nothing but gross calorific value scv nothing but higher higher calorific value this is nothing but gross calorific value lc be nothing but lower calorific value nc be nothing but net calorific value okay sc be nothing but gc be higher calorific nothing higher calorific value nothing but gross calorific value and lower calorific value nothing but net calorific value okay see the calorific value what is calorific value already we have discussed the total quantity of heat liberated when heat mass of the fuel is completely burnt at combustion the on uh, complete combustion the total quantity of heat liberated when heat mass of the fuel is completely burnt at combustion see ir or gross calorific value scv or gcv see the total quantity of heat liberated the total quantity of heat liberated when a heat mass of fuel is completely burnt and the combustion products are condensed at room temperature okay what is higher calorific value the total quantity of heat liberated when a unit mass of the fuel is completely burnt and the combustion products are condensed at room temperature okay the combustion products are condensed means it is closed vessel okay condensation takes place in closed vessel okay the combustion products are condensed in room temperature that is called higher or gross calorific value lesser lower net calorific value nothing but lcv or ncv nothing but the total quantity of heat liberated when a unit mass of the fuel is completely burnt and the combustion products are allowed to escape into environment okay when combustion products are allowed to escape means we have to take in open vessel okay if you take open vessel the combustion products are allowed to escape into the environment okay what is the lesser net calorific value the total quantity of heat liberated when a unit mass of the fuel is completely burnt and the combustion products are allowed to escape into environment that is called lcv or ncv okay the calorific value measured in closed vessel that is scv or gcv okay if you measure the calorific value of the fuel in opened vessel okay opened container that is called lcv or ncv okay now we are going to solve problems on scv and lcv okay dulong's formula okay to measure the scv and lcv we have to follow the dulong's formula in this formula the calorific value scv of a fuel of the total calorific value of each of the components by using this dulong's formula we can measure the scv and lcv see the gross calorific value or i is i or calorific value gcv or scv equal to 1 by 100 1 by 100 into 8080 year percentage of carbon plus 34500 into h percentage of hydrogen minus percentage of oxygen divided by 8 plus 2240 into percentage of sulfur into calorie per gram okay this is the formula for the scv or gcv the formula for gcv or scv according to dulong's gcv or scv equal to 1 by 100 into 8080 into percentage of carbon plus 34500 into h minus oxygen by 8 here you have to take percentages okay plus 2000 2240 into percentage of sulfur into calorie per gram this is the formula for the gcv or scv according to dulong's the 
Next formula is NCB or LCB. NCB nothing but net calorific value, LCB nothing but lower calorific value. That equal to SCB minus, SCB will get from this formula, then minus 9 into percentage of hydrogen divided by 100 into 587 calorie per gram. Here 587 is nothing but latent heat of vaporization, latent heat of water. Okay. Where carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur are the percentage of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and sulfur. Okay. You have to take here, C is nothing but you have to take percentage of carbon. Here S is nothing but you have to take percentage of hydrogen. Here O is nothing but you have to take percentage of oxygen. Similarly, you have to take percentage of sulfur here. Okay. These are the formulas for Dillon's. Okay. These are formula given by Dillon's. GCB or SCB formula is 1 by 100 into 8080 carbon plus 34500 into H minus O by 8 plus 2240 sulfur. Okay. The formula for NCB or LCB equal to SCB. SCB will get from here this formula. SCB minus 9 into percent of hydrogen divided by 100 into 587. These are the formula given by Dillon. See, now we are going to solve problems on the this Dillon formula. See, the first problem is a sample of coal contains the carbon percentage has given 60 percentage. The carbon percentage how much he has given 60 percentage. Then hydrogen he has given 6 percentage. The hydrogen percentage has given 6 percentage. Oxygen percentage he has given 33 percentage and sulfur percentage 0 0.5 percentage and nitrogen percentage 0 0.2 percentage and ash percentage 0 0.3 percentage. Then we have to calculate the SCV and LCV according to this Dillon's. Okay. See, the first we have to calculate the SCV. The formula for the SCV is equal to 1 by 100, 80, 80 percentage of carbon plus 34500 H minus O by 8 plus 2240 sulfur. Okay. Here, the carbon percentage how much has given? 8080 80 into the carbon percentage has given 60 percentage. Okay. 1 by 100 plus 34500. Okay. H, H nothing but percentage of hydrogen. How much he is given? 6. 6 minus O nothing but percentage of oxygen. How much he is given oxygen percentage? 33 percentage. Okay. 33 percentage by 8 plus 2240 into S. Sulfur percentage how much he is given? Sulfur 0 0.5. Okay. 0 0.5. Okay. If you solve this problem, okay, how, you, how much we will get? The SCV value we will get. 5506.07 calorie per gram. This is the SCVR GCV. The GCVR SCV of the this fuel. We got 5506.07 calorie per gram. This is the formula for the SCVR GCV. The next formula for next formula is LCV. You have to calculate LCV. The formula for LCV equal to LC lower calorie value equal to SCV minus 9 by sorry 9 into hydrogen by 100 into 587 okay see hydrogen nothing but percentage of hydrogen you have to take how much SCV we got the amount of SCV we got is 5506.07 minus 9 into h hydrogen percent how much has given hydrogen 6 percentage divided by 100 into 587 if you solve this equation, we will get the LCV, lower calorific value of the fuel that is 5198.095 calorie per gram. This, the, this is the way you can calculate the SCV and LCV of the uh, fuel by using Dillon's formula. The second problem is calculate the grass and net grass nothing but GCV and net calorific value nothing but NCV. Okay. Score sample having the following composition. How much is given? Carbon. 80% he has given, hydrogen 7% he has given, oxygen 3%, sulfur 3.5 and nitrogen ash percentage he has given. But formula only with carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur we can require. Okay. But he has given nitrogen and ash percentage also. But we don't use these nitrogen and ash percentages. Okay. We don't use these uh, composition in the formula. Only we require the percentage of carbon, the percentage of hydrogen, percentage of oxygen and percentage of sulfur. Those terms we can need for the calculation. Okay. The GCV formula equal to 1 by 100, 8080 carbon plus 34500 H minus O by 8 plus 2240 sulfur calorie per gram. See, 1 by 100, 8080. The carbon percentage how much has given? 80% substitute here and 34500 
7 hydrogen percentage is 7 minus oxygen percent 3 substitute these things 2240 into sulfur percent how much is given 3.5 okay solve this equation we will get the the gross calorific value that is 8828.025 calorie per gram this is the gcv okay what is the formula for net calorific value the net calorific value nothing but gcv or scv minus 9 into hydrogen percentage divided by 100 into 587 okay this is how much we got gcv 8828.025 minus 9 into the percentage of hydrogen how much has given 7 percentage into 7 okay divided by 100 into 587 if you solve this we will get the net calorific value of the fuel that is 8458.21 calorie per gram we can solve the gcv or scv ncv or ncv by using dilang's formula by this way you can calculate thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates